today we're going to be talking about one of the most um, missed paragraphs in real estate. One of the things that most real estate agents don't put the right thing in there, and that is the paragraph 60 objection. Welcome to Mondays with Micah. I'm Micah. So let's talk about something that has confused real estate agents since day one. And most agents may not be putting the right information here. What we're talking about today is paragraph 60 objections. Yes. So what goes in the blank? Here's what most real estate agents put in the blank. They put single family residential, single family enjoyment, multifamily residential, multifamily enjoyment. Well, that's not what goes there. Oh my gosh, Micah, what are you talking about? That's what I see in the contract all the time. Let's think about it. The title of our contract is the one to four family contract residential. The whole contract is meant so that your buyer is going to be able to enjoy this property as a one, two, three, or four family residential property. You don't have to write it in here saying we object if we can't use it as a residential property. Well, that's pretty much a given with the whole contract. So what does go there? Let's talk about it. Here's what goes there. We've got to have a conversation with our buyers on how they are going to use this property beyond single family residential. So what is it? Well, are they going to run a business out of their home? Are they going to run a hair salon, a child daycare, a nail salon? Are they going to raise dogs there? Do they need a space to park an RV or a big rig? Do they want chickens? Do they want to have a chicken coop? And here's the latest hottest trend. Do they want to have a short term rental? Put it up on Verbo, VRBO. Do we want to do weekends? Do we want to do week or a short term for a month? Maybe they're buying the property so that they can do those short term rentals. Well, what about do they want to have a future pool? Yes, even something like that. This blank here is for you to protect your buyer and ask them, how do you intend to use the property beyond your single family residential? And you can prompt them. Do you need to park something? Do you need to run a business? Do you're going to, are you going to have a future pool? And if you do, let's write it in future in ground pool. And how about a chicken coop? So now we have in our contract a place for our buyers to be protected. So if they want to have that future in crown pool, what happens whenever that survey comes back and there's a flood easement that does not give them the space to even build a future pool. Now they have the opportunity to terminate and get their earnest money back because you protected their future use. What about chicken coops? Well, we want to have chickens. We want to have a chicken coop. We wrote it into the contract. We protected our buyer and that is letting them know that, Hey, if those deed restrictions, if that HOA, if that city doesn't allow them to have chickens or a chicken coop in their property, and that's one of the main things that they were planning on doing. Now your buyer can object and can terminate prior to closing and get their earnest money back if they're not able to use the property the way that they intended. So it's not whether it's single family residential, the whole contract makes that a given. This is beyond it. Protect your buyer, have a conversation. How do you intend to use the property? Let's put it in there because if they can't use it the way that they wanted to, we always want to make sure our buyers have the right to terminate get their earnest money back and find a property that allows them to use it how they intended. Remember, your job as a real estate agent is to educate. 
It's all about education. The more educated you are, the better agent you will be. If you feel like you want more information about this topic or any other topic in real estate, join us for our CE classes, join us for mentoring. We would love to make you the best agent that you can be.